Hide your kids. Lock the doors. You're listening to HR's most dangerous podcast. Chad Sowash and Joel Cheeseman are here to punch the recruiting industry right where it hurts. Complete with breaking news, brash opinion, and loads of snark. Buckle up, boys and girls. It's time for the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Oh, yeah. Two guys sharing a drink called loneliness, but it's better than drinking alone. Hi, kids. It's the Chad and Cheese Podcast. I'm your co-host, Joel Solar Eclipse Cheeseman. This is Chad, Girl Power So Wash. And on this episode, LinkedIn TikToks, Indeed Sources, and Amazon just walks out, plus buy or sell. Let's do this. <laughs> Hospitality is the heart of our society. It brings people together to share great food, drinks, and experiences. But successfully managing a restaurant or hotel is no easy feat. That's where Harry comes in. Harry is the frontline employee experience platform that helps you build, manage, and engage great teams. With Harry, managers can easily find and hire top talent, manage timekeeping, and communicate with employees at any time from any place. Candidates and team members can quickly and efficiently apply for jobs, swap shifts, and access important information entirely from their mobile devices. And Harry's robust employee engagement tools make team members feel more connected than ever. With Harry, as an owner or operator, you get a bird's eye view of your business. From turnover cost, labor cost, employee sentiment, compliance risk, and team performance. Run your business better by understanding the power of your people. Because when your team is the heart of your business, Harry is the heartbeat. See how it transforms your business. Have you heard there's a a big event uh, in Indiana on Monday called the solar eclipse yeah we've got a little little town here columbus indiana forty thousand people and this weekend we're supposed to have two hundred and fifty thousand people because we <laughs> are in the direct path yeah yeah we are it's in the direct crazy path. yeah my my aunt and little seymour which is smaller than columbus uh they're expecting yeah. like a hundred thousand people uh <laughs> it'll be great for the economy that's for sure i hope the weather cooperates yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no matter what, it's not like people aren't going to buy shit, right? It's, yeah. The, the thing, it was funny. Um, I was going through uh, a physical therapy this morning, the whole shoulder mm-hmm. thing, and everybody was talking about getting your groceries. Getting, it was like, almost like an apocalypse, right? Yep. Well, you got to make the sure you get it. your groceries, you got to get your stuff, get in. I'm like, why? I mean, you're like, well, you're going to be able to get groceries. Everybody's going to buy everything out. It's like, well, don't Four you minutes guys of like... night. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the day is going to destroy everything. Yeah. We're, uh, oh. you know, as, as listeners know, my, my wife is a, a scientist professor. So we're having, uh-huh. we're having a get together. You don't really have parties at our age. It's, we're having a get together. <laughs> <laughs> and Sun King, a popular uh, brewery here in Central yeah. Indiana, has a, an Eclipse beer. I don't they know what it's called. Do. We have, it's yeah, crazy. we have two growlers ready to rock <laughs> uh, for Tuesday. We've got the glasses. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I'm calling it the Joler Eclipse. You know, <laughs> if that's, that's so bad. Is so that bad. pretty bad? So, yeah. so how was Easter? Real quick. Easter good. was good. Easter was yeah. also Jeremy's birthday, uh, my yes. now seven-year-old. So mm-hmm. Easter was Godzilla versus King Kong. That's awesome. Or they're actually teaming awesome. up to to fight. Yes. Yeah, monsters killing each other. It's great. Uh, it. Easter egg hunt. Had my 84-year-old dad come over. Uh, we had, by Jeremy's choice, pizza Sammy's. Uh, so like big <laughs> grinders with pepperoni and pizza <laughs> and cheese, which is fine with me. Um, and, and that was it. How about you? Yeah, I went down to Clarksville, Tennessee. My uh, brother and sister-in-law are getting ready to move to Australia. I can't wait to go visit them. Uh, so we visit them and their uh, their three young boys. So that was a good time. And literally on Easter, we started drinking like at 10 a.m. And we mm-hmm. didn't stop all through the day. Beer mosas, I mean, you name it. So nice. Uh, other brother-in-law actually did a, a big ass brisket and ribs and so yeah it was it was it was pretty awesome it was a good send off let's just say yeah. that well i didn't i didn't hear from you on monday so i assume that you were no. either hung over or recovering from brisket overdose yeah. and uh, traveling was... back and, and trying not to fall asleep yeah. at the wheel with all that fucking brisket on my stomach <laughs> do you do you have a favorite tennessee whiskey 
No, I don't. I, I I'm not a big Tennessee whiskey fan, and there are so yeah. many bourbons in Kentucky. Uh, I, I just haven't pushed past it. Not to mention, I'm really looking forward to, we'll talk about this later, kids, uh, our trip to Scotland. Tease. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tease. I, I like Bibb and Tucker. Uh, try it out if you haven't, if you like the yeah. whiskeys. Bibb and, okay. Bibb and Tucker. And it's a cool bottle. Bibb and Tucker. Cool bottle as well. All right. All shout right. out. All right. Let's We're going to go shout first outs. shout out, kid, uh, to... Sebastian Detmers, the CEO over at Stepstone. So earlier this week, he posted the following on LinkedIn, quote, after much contemplation, I've decided to embark on a digital detox journey and will be going offline for the next three months. During my absence, all standard internal and external inquiries will be in the capable virtual hands of chat GPT, courtesy of an innovative AI CEO partnership with open AI mm-hmm. end quote. So the post goes on, but after reading this, I reached out to a couple of friends at, and, and I was still, you know, kind of loopy from uh, Easter, by the way, sure. uh, at Stepstone and AppCast. I was like, dude, what the fuck? I got nothing but laughing emoji uh, emojis. And he got you. Yes. It was mm. an April fool's joke. And oh. yes, Sebastian, you got me, my friend. You got me. Good job. Good Not job bad. on that one. I Not fucking bad. hate Maybe. April fool's. Maybe he's been listening to the show because we've talked about uh, CEOs going away and being replaced by uh, AI. So it yeah, wasn't that was. out of the norm for us to, yeah, to see good. something like that. But yeah, it's good. That's good. good. Job. That's good. Uh, my first shout out. Uh, I, I'm sure you saw Taiwan uh, had a big earthquake um, this week. Yes. Yeah. And I was massive amazed at how well the infrastructure handled yes. it. Uh, they have a huge building that was fine. Uh, bridges, every like nothing. It was pretty, pretty well maintained. There were a few buildings, but yes. the buildings that fell didn't like collapse into dust. They kind of like fell off the base. Mm-hmm. Most of the people were saved. It was just, just shout out to Taiwan and their infrastructure. In contrast to us, you yeah. know, has one boat hit the base of a bridge and the whole thing falls down like a bridge of toothpicks. Uh, I don't know if it's too late for the infrastructure bill, but you, the USA is in dire need of some Taiwanese engineering. <laughs> yeah. I think any of those buildings that would have gotten hit by a container ship would have gone down. Uh, my shout out <laughs> to girl power. That's right. The AP is reporting that women's final four tickets are on the resale market selling for an average of get ready kids, $2,300, which is twice as much as mm-hmm. the men men's final four and you've got caitlin clark from iowa to thank for that camilla over at south carolina god that she mm-hmm. is big and she is she's like the shack of mm-hmm. uh, of ncaa basketball for for women Paige beckers angel reese um but friday matches are iowa against connecticut south carolina mm-hmm. against north carolina state it's pretty awesome because i know that you remember yeah going to girls basketball games and like the scores would be 35 to 12, right? It was, it was excruciating watching girls basketball, but now it, I like watching the, the girls play more than I do the, the dudes. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's to amazing your, to your point. That was a high scoring affair. If it was 35 to 12, that was, yeah. that yeah. was a banger baby uh, in, <laughs> back in the day. A um, banger. Totally. So uh, I have friends in Cleveland uh, where uh-huh. the final four is, and I can confirm that they have reached out or tried to get some some second market tickets, mm-hmm. aftermarket tickets. And the cheapest that they found was $800 a ticket. And this is a professional arena. This isn't like a high school gym, right? This like is 20, legit. 000, so, yeah. so huge. And I'm going to mess up some of these, but the viewership of the Iowa LSU game Oh God! Topped, I think the Grammys, like every yeah. award show, uh, most of the NBA playoff games, like really big viewership, and and I think it's fantastic. It was a rematch of last year's final rematch, but great yeah. characters, great story oh, yeah. with those two. Uh, uh-huh. Caitlin Clark is very likely to be the first pick coming to Indiana, Indiana yeah. uh, next year, and as an yeah. Indiana resident, I can't be more excited. Than to have her they also had the first pick last year so they, they could be a juggernaut of a WNBA team they're going to sell out the arena which yeah. is kind of amazing they might outsell the pacers uh you know on average per <laughs> game hard, per but yeah yeah well, i mean the pacers <laughs> are pretty good still but yeah uh, so bad, my yeah. shout out piggybacks on that i think this has uh-huh. been the most fun 
March Madness that I can remember a long time. And mo- mm-hmm. a lot of it isn't the even the NCAA. Um, you mentioned the women's basketball, which I echo. The NIT is one of the most fun tournaments that I've seen in a while. Now, Indiana State hasn't done anything since Larry Bird was there in the 70s. Yes. Uh-huh. They're the number one seed. They should have been in the NCAA, but I'm kind of glad they're not because now they're playing in the Final Four, yeah. uh, which is in Indiana. They're playing in Butler, which if you're – a Midwesterner Hoosier. This is like folklore. This is Milan, oh, yeah. the movie Hoosiers. Uh-huh. Like this is a really Gene old historic Hackman. arena. Indiana <laughs> State's basically going to be the home team uh, uh-huh. in this thing. Um, they beat Utah and they play uh, Seton Hall, I think, for the championship. So it's like a biggie school playing mm-hmm. Indiana State. Like that's so much fun. And they have this guy. Uh, his name is Robbie Avila. And he he wears these throwback goggles like Kareem used to wear and, <laughs> yeah. and worthy. And uh-huh. he's he's about six nine, I think, white guy. Oh, he's he's mixed. He's like half Hispanic, half white. And okay. he has the best nicknames. Uh he's he's his nicknames include Cream Abdul Jabbar, not Kareem, but Cream, <laughs> like Cream Soda, uh Larry Nerd. Larry Bird and uh, Milk Chamberlain is another one. So great <laughs> nicknames there. And then you got and then you got DJ Horn at NC State. You mentioned the big the big folks in the middle. This guy, yeah. he's listed at two seventy five. I'm he hasn't seen two seventy five since eighth grade. I, I don't know where the hell they're getting that. But this dude is he's got personality. He's fun. Uh-huh. NC double or NC State is a is a you know is a uh, underdog Purdue's uh-huh. in it. Purdue is like one all American and a bunch of Indiana, like gym rats. Uh, so that's, that's kind of fun to watch kind of a throwback to teams of the eighties and seventies. But yeah, I think mm. shout out to shout out to March madness. If, if last month was six nations, this month has been March madness and it's been a, a hell of a lot of fun. Amen. Amen. Well, a shout out last shout out goes to free stuff. That's right. Free t-shirts from Aaron app. Free beer and whiskey that are coming to your front door. Beer from Aspen Tech Labs. Whiskey from Tex Colonel. One bottle from Joel. One bottle from me. And if it's your birthday, you could win <laughs> rum from birthday. our pals at Plum. Plum. In the air right now? I know I yeah. can. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. All right. <laughs> A few listeners are celebrating another trip around the sun. Kind of eclipse, solar eclipse. I don't know. I don't know if there's any tie in there. Uh, Todd Burns, Amy English, Arno Schaefer, Derek Christensen, Rob McIntosh, Lewis Nobrek, and Patrick York. Happy birthday! There we go. I'll celebrate a birthday this week. Happy birthday to you guys. Excellent. Well, I'm not going to be going anywhere for the eclipse because we're getting ready to go to Vegas, my friend. Yes, we are. We're getting ready to go yes, to Vegas. We are. Unleash That's America winning. is coming to Las Vegas again, May mm-hmm. 7th through the 9th. The day before, on March 6th, Joel and I are going to get high. No, not that kind of high. We're going to the top of the stratosphere, and we're jumping over 800 feet to Earth with our friend Matt Bauer, the CEO from Out Higher. That's right, Out Higher. What more? is that out higher is paying for our listeners to join us do the jump. So if you want to register to win or nominate, maybe your boss or a friend to jump with us, mm-hmm. go to chadchies.com. It's right there in the hero uh, header. Click the jump with us button right on the homepage, register and come see us. Then yeah, come see us fall to earth. Uh, then <laughs> all right. On Tuesday, May 7th, this is where Kibu comes in. Uh, We're Uh, heading to the minus five bar with Job Pixel and Great People. More details to come. But I'm telling you right now, we're going to feel like we're in Finland. It's going to be cold. We're going to have the big puffy jackets. I I guarantee you. Uh, And then last but not least, on May 8th, we're joining our friends over at Plum at the Neon Boneyard. You love little Neon. Here's little Chad and Cheese Neon. Um, Where we're going to be drinking, eating, and basking in the evening glow of Las Vegas' iconic retired Neon signs. You know those old neon signs sure. that they that they, that they got, you thought they got rid of? Oh, they mm-hmm. didn't get rid of them, kids. They're all in a 
Neon Boneyard. Google Neon Boneyard. Check it out. It is freaking awesome. Us there with our friends from Plum. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a great unleash. It is going to be great. Uh, but I heard nothing after jumping to our death uh, from your first <laughs> first segment. <laughs> I'm trying. So there's a weight limit of 265. I think I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm going to see how many burritos it takes uh, to to get to a point where I get on the scale and they're like, "Dude, you're too heavy. Sorry, sorry." And, and if sorry not, uh, I need to invest in some depends because I'm going to shit my pants uh, when I jump <laughs> when I jump off this thing. Oh God, is that it for announcements? That's it. I'm so. Topics. All right. We got some red meat for the listeners this week. Indeed Ooh. has revamped its user profile page, introducing an AI powered writer to enhance work experience descriptions and supporting multiple resumes. It also launched smart sourcing suites for recruiters, including AI powered candidate summaries and custom messages aiming to reduce irrelevant outreach and streamline hiring processes. Chad, what are your thoughts from the latest upgrades at Indeed? This is nothing more than just window dressing at the top of the funnel, which isn't, why isn't Indeed making more of an effort to move down funnel? AI resumes full of hallucinations and easy applies. That's a recipe for fucking disaster. Uh, How does any of that help companies find the right candidates. Well, it just doesn't. So if Indeed wanted to make a real impact, they would move down funnel, partner with platforms like Tadio or HackerRank to start gathering skills and performance data that actually matters. Coding tests, performance tests, gather the data that employers actually fucking need. Also, from this article, I thought it was interesting. Talent.com was mentioned in the story as it a was, competitor. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. So... So many of these aggregators are just indeed pilot fish. They're collecting the crumbs. They're not innovating. They're not moving the needle. And they're definitely not competitors. Um, So if you, talent.com and quote unquote competitors, if you want to compete with Indeed, beat them to the punch. Mm -hmm. Go down funnel, collect the data that employers and LLMs, yes, large language models will use to make relevant matches better. The reason why... I hate on Indeed so hard is because they have the means to change this industry. And yet they're changing the drapes in the fucking basement. Mm -hmm. For for example, interview scheduling. They talk about interview scheduling in this. In 2024, interview scheduling should be a fucking afterthought. When a candidate applies for a job, answers some pre-screening, pre-qual questions, they should meet, if they meet the requirements... They should have an interview interview now button that pops up and it takes you directly to a qualify, a pillar or a vet for interview. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should be cutting corners as opposed to just playing the window dressing game. And that's all Indeed's doing. And I fucking hate that. 60 percent of the time it works every time. Tell us how you really feel, Chad. Um, (laughs) So I, I, I view this as. You know, Google came out and, and sort of struck out against uh, the job board industry and job postings. And that seems to be alleviated for the most point. Jo- it, like mm-hmm. Google has said, we're not getting into pay-per-click. We'll let you guys still put your job postings in our search. So now it's like, what's the other front of, of Indeed's war that they need to think about? And that's LinkedIn, uh, in my opinion. So to me, both of these updates are reactions to what LinkedIn is failing to do uh, or has has uh, effectively uh, crushed outside of its uh, walled garden. So it, with job search, look, LinkedIn job search sucks. Uh, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> like it's related searches or recommendations are awful. So if I'm indeed, I already have a better job search than LinkedIn does. So what does LinkedIn do that I can do better? Well, on LinkedIn, I can have generally one profile, right? And now LinkedIn, or Indeed comes out with, oh, now you can have five resumes. So if you want one to be focused on a specific skill, you can. If you want another resume specific, personally, this can go really bad, five resumes per person. Uh, but at it's least stupid. in theory, 
it's a strike ah. against LinkedIn because LinkedIn yeah. only has has one one profile. So that is a differentiator, whether it's it's worthy or not of competing with LinkedIn. I guess we'll find out, but it is a move to go after LinkedIn. I think the bigger product or or uh, upgrade is the sourcing tool, which uh, from at least one insider that I talked to at, at Indeed, uh, they're really focused on the sourcing stuff. Like they're uh-huh. really uh, batting down the hatches, all hands on deck kind of thing. Like they want well, that's to do a LinkedIn this, thing. They, they want, want to, to do this really well. Seats. And that's exactly a LinkedIn yeah. thing. Yeah. So it, we've talked about LinkedIn effectively crushing every other third party solution that uses its data. Uh, yeah. The seek outs of the world, the higher tools, the higher ease. Like, so Indeed has said, look, we can't let LinkedIn just own this sourcing thing. We have a hell of a lot of resumes too. So how do we keep people in our ecosystem searching our resumes and then sourcing effectively, messaging, mm. et cetera, to those people? So this entire move uh, for me from from Indeed is a strike at LinkedIn I think the sourcing is really interesting. I think the job search, like you said, is sort of uh, lipstick on a pig. Um, but they've got LinkedIn in their sites clearly, and I don't think this is the last uh, strike that they're going to make on on LinkedIn. Well, how you make sourcing better is better data for better yeah. matches. That we already know their matching's shit. It's probably not as bad as LinkedIn's, but their matching's already shit. They need better data to be able to bump up against having five resumes is fucking stupid. I mean, it's like, it's like, you know, back to the future. How many, how many pieces of shit can we throw out there for people to actually look at? I I Mm -hmm. don't care. What I care is, do they meet the requirements and do we, they have the skills and can they perform? That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. And then go ahead and get me right into the interview. And at that point we can see if there's a match. Okay. That's it, guys. It's that fucking simple. But what they're doing is they're playing up top at the top of the funnel. And that doesn't fucking matter. None of it matters. None of it matters. So go down funnel. And again, for all the talent.coms that are out there, the ad zunas, I mean, even companies who don't even look like indeed competitors, go down funnel, get that data because the market is all about the large language models and being able to grind that data pool, that new data, that LinkedIn doesn't have that indeed doesn't have Mm -hmm. get that data. So you win. I don't think Chad's impressed everybody. I don't think Chad is uh, (laughs) impressed, impressed at all. Let's, let's get to LinkedIn's news and see if that Mm. impresses you. Uh, LinkedIn is testing (laughs) TikTok style video options, aiming to help (laughs) users discover timely videos. The feature will appear next to the home button and resembles TikTok and Instagram reels. LinkedIn plans to provide more information about the new service very soon. So, Chad, are you ready to karaoke and dance to LinkedIn's TikTok competitor? Hey, they, they they had a version of Instagram Reels at one time, and then they just trashed that. Mm-hmm. Um, so why are they doing this? I mean, is, is TikTok stealing stickiness from them? Do they see that TikTok is, has stickiness that they want? And we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. It feels like Indeed is going more toward trying to be sticky for advertising dollars, right? For to be able to keep people on platform, to be able to get the, those advertising dollars. And one of the things that we also talked about was that LinkedIn doesn't stick with some of these these big projects that they put in place. Mm-hmm. Um, they need to hire someone someone with discipline, focused, and, and damned patience, for God's sake. Some of the ideas actually do make sense if they're implemented well. Mm-hmm. But right now, I put our videos on TikTok, and then I put the same ones on LinkedIn already. So what's, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't understand how this is going to change behavior at all. So a couple weeks ago... I mentioned that I thought LinkedIn uh, bailed on video too soon. Yeah. Uh, now, they've already tried, like you said, Reels. I would have called them sort of Snapchat stories um, that they quickly got rid of. And mm-hmm. I feel like with our video experience, our shorts, and you're seeing more and more shorts because every podcasting platform will create shorts for you. So yeah. it, we're going to see more of that in every industry. And bailing on that was a bad idea because you could have seen where the world was going and bailing on it was the wrong decision. It looks like now they're going to basically relaunch uh, some sort of video short system 
they'll probably have it more in the main feed. They won't just have it as circles at the top that are kind of out of the main feed area. It'll, it'll increase engagement. It'll cr increase sort of interest in advertising. Agencies love, the, love these videos. Small companies can make these videos really quickly. AI is going to make a lot more videos, some of these shorts. Um, so I think it's a good move. It, they never should have got out, out of it, in my opinion. Now, the second thing they need to do is the live video stuff uh, because they're awful at it and they should be really good at it. Uh, by all accounts, you have to use a third party um, to even stream on LinkedIn. They should have their own thing. And by the way, uh, X, which I know you love, is getting better at sort of the live video, live conversations. And that is gonna be something that LinkedIn needs to do well. So this is the first step into video. They need to work out like having webinars and podcasts like this live, live streamed on LinkedIn. And I think they've got something that's pretty interesting. Um, otherwise, let's hope they don't bail on this like they did uh, the stories that they had six months to a year ago. Yeah, well, I see once again on the advertising side of the house, this gives, mm -hmm more another vehicle to be able to do ads right so not just for us to be able to do podcast snippets or, or you know shorts or what have you but this is going to allow ads those yep. guacamole ads uh <laughs> that we saw that were static guacamole ads we're going to get a commercial on linkedin yeah. so again i i really see this turning into more of an advertising platform and literally pivoting uh in some respects away from the recruitment space because there's a hell of a lot more money in advertising if they can hold on to those recruiter seats right which you yeah. know we all know hr is really fucking slow to move in the first place mm -hmm. but then also go after the very quick hit of you know the the marketing side of the house then yeah. you know that 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 does make sense we'll see if it works though look historically linkedin sucks at advertising I mean, they still have those little like yeah. box ads on the rights, like, come on. So yeah, <laughs> like getting something video, something interactive, every agency yeah. will say, let's give LinkedIn another look uh, where we, we haven't done anything on, on there in a long time. So I'll we'll take that Twitter money that tw we, we've seen, we've seen reports where they have actually taken Twitter money. And I say they, those are companies who used to spend money, money on Twitter and mm -hmm. they want to spend it on platforms like LinkedIn. LinkedIn wants to give them the opportunity so that they can get that fucking Twitter cash. Yep. And integrating into advertising platforms. Look, companies are going to want to make a single TikTok ad. And how do I put it on Twitter? How do I put it yeah. on LinkedIn? How do, so like they want to be able to shotgun it everywhere. And LinkedIn needs to have something uh, that they can, can put their ad. All right, let's take a quick break. Guys, listen to the ads because there's no show without them. And when we get back, oh, yeah. a little buy or sell. That's what I'm talking about. All right, Chad, it's buy or sell. You know how we play the game. We listen We listen to three companies that have recently gotten money. And we read a summary, and then we either buy or sell the company. And for whatever reason, I can't find my uh, boxer. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. There it is. All right. There now it is. There now it is. I'm in the mood to play some buy or sell. All right. Number one, we got... <laughs> We got London-based MetaView, one of your faves from a recent firing squad. Yep. Uh, they're an AI assistant for streamlining hiring processes. They've raised $7 million in funding. The funds will accelerate product development and the team growth. Uh, they say they're already saving teams at least 20 hours per hire. Chad, mm -hmm. you weren't much of a fan, like I said, uh, but they're giving you 7 million new reasons why you should change your mind. Buy or sell MetaView. Yeah, it's funny because we we spoke with uh, Jason Corsello earlier this week from Acadian Ventures, and he was talking about on the the seed side, there's a lot of it's hot. There's a mm -hmm. lot of money that's going to be spent on the seed side because yep. people want to spend that money. You said it last week, uh, just on the IPO side, right? So people want to spend money. 
But in a world of generative AI, platforms like Google, Microsoft, Anthropic, Mistral, and Meta are going to win unless, unless you have the secret sauce. And that secret sauce is years of data. Like, for example, ATS and CRM companies, mm -hmm. behavioral data. MetaView is way too late to the party. The beer's gone. All the chick, all the hot chicks are passed out. The one thing MetaView has going for them is a great CEO, and that's not enough for me. It's still, even with those seven million reasons, it's still a self. <laughs> All right, Chad. And, uh, interview intelligence is hot. I don't know if you've, you've heard it. Uh, I hang out with a lot of kids that are talking about interview intelligence a lot. Uh, now, I think some solutions that have been around a while, uh, Bright Hire, full disclosure, I'm an yeah. advisor, uh, Hone yep. It have have been have evolved this thing a lot a lot mm -hmm. longer. And I think are further along than uh, than MetaView is. But it's a wave that is going to get a lot of attention and 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 funding and it's going to be an acquisition target for somebody in the next two to three years so if the mission is sell this thing at seven million could they sell it for 50 i guess uh, uh we'll see bright uh, probably go off first <laughs> hone it hone it's been around a while nick must just love uh running that business uh and not selling it but for me like i think it's a buy i think it's a wave that uh is easy to surf even though the surfer in this case is maybe not the best surfer in the world but for me yeah i gotta i gotta doing i gotta buy it i gotta buy it i gotta buy it all right <laughs> that is metaview next up we have modal Mo Learning, a startup founded by two ex Udemy executives, has secured $25 million in Series A funding, which brings their total to $32 million. Modal offers a platform focused on enhancing employees' technical skills with courses on generative AI, data management, and analytics, among others. Chad, buy or sell Modal. I can't stop myself. I've got to buy, buy, buy. And let me tell you why. Okay. All companies are tech companies. We just had a great conversation with Mark Chaffee, CEO over at Hack a Job earlier this week. And he said that Walmart is pretty much absorbing tech talent that, you know, guys like your buddy Zuck are cutting. And those tech people will need mm -hmm. to keep their skills up to date. They will need to advance those skills because they need to, uh, to stay with the velocity of today's tech. Plus, mm -hmm. there are all those other non-tech technical skills that all employees will have to get trained on. Last but never the least, you mentioned it, uh, Shimkus and Yang, ex-Udemy mm -hmm. president and CEO, are founders. This is too easy. This is exactly all in their right, wheelhouse. They've right, sold something like right. this before. Buy, buy, buy. All right. Chad is a buy, 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 buy. on modal. Yeah, look. Uh, Interview intelligence is hot. Upscaling is even hotter. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of money flowing into this. Companies want to grow their own. They're tired of spending money uh, on recruiting yeah. and recruiters and agencies. Like, why can't we just educate our own folks and get them uh, further up the, uh, the the corporate ladder? Look, mm -hmm. this is an idea that's proven. You've got Gusto, Gloat, LinkedIn Learning, Degreed, Coursera. Like, it's a proven model. Uh, the only the only risk of these guys is is they just get crushed by whoever becomes Coke and Pepsi of the upskilling world and they just become yeah, a, a consolidation play. But I think there's going to yeah. be a lot of room for companies. Uh, they do have a uh, pricing model that is sort of unique. Uh, they only charge companies uh, when employees successfully complete a course. So there's a little bit of like there's no risk. You're only going to pay when someone completes a course, which is going to be very favorable based. to a lot of yeah. a lot of companies. So, uh, yeah, for me as well, like this is this is a winner. This is a winner. All right. Our last company. You're going to love these guys <laughs> home from college. That's right. The name of the company is home from college, a Los Angeles wow. based career platform. They've raised $5.4 million in seed funding. The platform caters to, you guessed it, Gen Z, offering part-time and full-time roles and serves clients like Poppy, Aquifer, and Steve Madden. Nothing says cool like a pair of Steve Maddens, everybody. With the cash, Home for College plans to expand the team and add more products for job seekers. Chad, buy or sell Home for College? 
Wow, man, five point four million in seed. That, that that's a lot of cash. Uh, but the problem is, college is transient. You're in college until you're not, and then you stop using your old college job systems. Uh, and then you moved on. Then you move on to LinkedIn, Indeed, Hack a Job, or wherever the people in your industry gravitate. So that mm-hmm. being said, you need to either partner closely with colleges and universities, or spend shit tons of cash on marketing month after month after month to maintain market penetration. I personally have experience in building these types of college recruiting systems, nightmares, working directly with colleges, universities, career center directors, and employers who have teams that are focused on hiring from the university. And I promised myself I would never fucking do that again. Mm -hmm. This is a sell very easily for me. Fair enough. All right. Uh, I'll make it quick because we got a lot of show left to go. I hate the name. I hate the college. <laughs> I hate the college environment. You're right. Like yes. every few years, there's a new player handshake, go back. When's you the can, last time we uh, heard yeah, from like them? monster track or whatever the fuck that like it's, yep. it, it's just bad business. I hate targeting like generationally. Um, it just, it's kind of silly to me. Look, there's already a resume builder out there. It's called LinkedIn and it already has all the people who are going to hire you on it. So don't mess around with some, work or home from college site to build your resume, go to LinkedIn (laughs) and build your resume there and keep it updated and, and connect with people. Like it's such a much better uh, product. Do you remember visual CV from back in the day? Oh yeah. I mean, this thing has been tried and tried again. Uh, Mm -hmm. By the way, Polywork, the company that was going to like dislodge LinkedIn, it was LinkedIn for the kids. Apparently Uh, I haven't checked in on them in a while. I did for this this story. Uh, Polywork is basically turn your LinkedIn profile into a pretty resume. So they've basically gone full visual CV where uh-huh. they used to be like, have a profile, have a cartoon character. Uh, I don't exactly know because I never joined. And I, I asked my network, like, is it worth joining? And everyone said no, which obviously is true because now it's just a give us your profile and we'll make it into a, a pretty resume. So uh, for this, like, yeah, you can guess. I'm a big sell on home from college. At least it's a dot com, so you can you can remember that. <laughs> That's right, kids. Get, Grandpa says get your profile on LinkedIn. Go. That's right. All right, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk a little food, shall we? A little fast food, a little uh, little quick serve action. First up, we have uh, Waffle House. Uh, the Union of Southern Service Workers has filed a petition against Waffle House alleging mm-hmm. the chain deducts mandatory meal costs from workers' paychecks, even if the meals aren't eaten. Workers are charged at least $3 per on-shift meal, impacting those on a tipped sub-minimum wage. Chad, your thoughts, and what's your go-to meal at Waffle House? Because <laughs> uh, I know I, there's about I, 10 in Columbus. Yeah, there's a, they're <laughs> splattered and scattered and splattered and all that other fun stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, this is from the Waffle House employee manual, quote, meals must be consumed at the restaurant and no food can be taken home under the meal policy. Any food actually taken home by such an associate will be considered a to go order and must be paid full price. End quote. Uh, number one, any company that says that stupid shit right out of the gate, it's like, <laughs> fuck off. But then. The Union of Southern Services Workers called it especially alarming since, mm-hmm. as you had said, these workers make a sub-minimum wage. What is a sub-minimum wage, kids? It's $2.90 an hour. Yes, Europe. Yes, Europe. You think you get fucked sometimes? $2.90 an hour plus tips. But it's a Waffle House. We're talking tips at a Waffle House. It, th- this is not... This is not uh, Upscale. Yeah, no, okay? no one's ordering two hundred dollars worth of food at the Waffle no, House. No, no. Th- this to me is is just fucking ridiculous. Um, wh- the the center of gravity for where these Waffle Houses are. Georgia has three hundred and eighty one. South Carolina one forty four. North Carolina one forty two. Florida one thirty three. And Alabama one twenty eight. It's in the South. Mm-hmm. It's in the South, the impoverished. If you take a look at where most poverty is in the U.S., it's in the South. And Waffle House, you're not helping. You're mm-hmm. not helping. Mm-hmm. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. 
So let's get these these numbers right here. So <laughs> Waffle House is a four billion dollar uh, a year company. Uh, its chair, a guy a guy named Joe Rogers Jr., mm -hmm. uh, is worth one point seven billion dollars. Uh, if this is I true, Waffle House earns the douchebag company of the year award because Chad's right. These, if you haven't been to Waffle House, you're missing out kids. Uh, it is, <laughs> it is, it's good people. A lot of times yes. this is the only company that will hire them. Uh, I've never had a bad experience from an employee far, at Waffle yeah. House. Well, okay. And by it's the way, usually the, at two the, in right, the, morning. the right answer is the, uh, the biscuits and gravy, uh, by the way, in terms of best thing at, at Waffle House. But yeah, look, if it's true, Waffle House didn't come out and say, this is not true. They didn't say, uh, this is why, or we make it up. So like, so all, by all accounts, yeah. this is true. Waffle House hasn't come and they have a PR department, I'm sure. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is bullshit. I hope the union gets what they deserve. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope this practice stops because inevitably it's wage theft. Um, oh yeah. At at worst and maybe at best it's corporate greed. Uh, but it it's a practice that's really it's stupid needs to stop. I mean, it's look, both. <laughs> let's be honest. Making making a, a pile of pancakes at Waffle House probably costs them thirty cents, right? And and to like maybe three bucks i just it's just i don't it's just really it's really bad it's really bad that god it's damn bad. it waffle house i gotta go to ihop let's go, now let's go to the go. other side of the pendulum let's talk about uh, california yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I gotta go to cracker barrel now god damn it all right in california about half a million fast food workers are now mm -hmm. making at least twenty dollars per hour thanks to a new law that raises wages for restaurant chains with more than 60 nationwide locations. The law also establishes a fast food council, a first in the U.S., to annually adjust wages in line with inflation or up to 3.5% and to address worker safety and other issues. Owners of some fast food franchise locations have already increased prices or cut worker hours in response to the higher wages. Chad, does this drive you to Californication or is it just a little California dreaming? Yeah. So uh, over the years, we've been told a bunch of lies, a, a lot of myths. If we pay these people living wages, we're going to have to go out of business. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to raise the food rates, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in November of 2013, yes, over 10 years ago, SeaTac passed Prop 1, which authorized a $15 minimum wage policy, which was phased in over several years. The policy went into effect in January of 2014. Six months later, mm -hmm. the larger Seattle City Council expanded a similar $15 minimum wage policy to nearly 20,000 workers. So this is a great model to look at as, as we look at predicting outcomes uh, because this took place more than 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Did that kill restaurants? No. Since 2015, the number of restaurants is actually up in Seattle 5%. That's over 3,200 restaurants. Annual sales increased by 20%. Mm -hmm. Seattle's job growth has outpaced the rest of Washington State. So now let's go back to Cali. 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 New I don't think so. Cali, 20 dollar per hour minimum wage the average mcdonald restaurant franchise owner they make about one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year however that figure could change depending on the location and how many they own that's Any an level of experience yeah yeah so the last time california raised the minimum wage to 16 dollars guess what happened profits went up mm -hmm. what where do you think these people buy food when you put money in people's pockets, they fucking spend it, right? They can buy more. So owners should stop balling up in the fetal position mm -hmm. and start researching these models. Many Seattle restaurants are experiencing much lower turnover and higher profits because of this. This is not the shit that Milton Freeman talked about. He had fear in, oh, you're going to lose people and all mm -hmm. the money has to go to the top. Fuck off, Milton. I hope you're <laughs> you're getting turning over in your goddamn grave right now because you were wrong. We need to pay the people. He, he's, he's with Jack Welch and not very happy about your words uh, <laughs> coming out of your mouth. Um, okay. Uh, there are a couple of things I don't like about this. Uh, I don't like that there's a rule that if you serve just bread alone, you're immune. You're like immune to this, which means Panera, 
which means P- Panera weird. Bread uh, gets 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 a pass from this. And apparently Newsom and the Panera. So there's some politics here that I don't I don't like particularly, but everything else it, you should like. Look, you have to mm. have 60 plus locations. So that means it's not killing the mom and pop barbecue, uh, you know, down the street. It's not killing, right. you know, the taco Rito, uh, taco um, you know, favorite downtown, whatever establishment. So these are mainly big companies with a lot of money, a lot of resources. Um, and the fear of, so the fear mongering was the prices are going to go, are going to go insane. You're not going to be able to afford it. So we have our first indication of what price price increases mean, uh, there was an in and out burger, uh, pre April 1st and post April uh-huh. 1st in terms of prices. So I think I'm paying 10 cents more for a cheeseburger. I'm paying like five cents more, uh, for, for a, che- a hamburger, uh, maybe 20 cents more for a shake. Fries didn't go up. So f- potatoes must be doing very well, uh, growing wise. So it's not Cheap. like my cheeseburger went from three ninety nine to ten ninety nine. Uh, right. so the price increases are negligible. These folks that have a hard time making a living will now be able to do so. By the way, we know that when poor people get money, more money, they spend it. They spend it on food and yes. gas and consumables and iPads. Imagine that. And yeah, yeah. So, so most of this is going to come back into the mar- like the, the cycle. When you give rich people a lot of money, they put it in a bank or they, you know, they, they store it. They, they don't, don't spend just it. spend it. Yeah. So no. giving money to, to people without means is usually a good thing to keep the economy um, right. ro- robust. Now, what I what will be interesting to see. So I don't think there's any Armageddon. I don't think there's like the root, the sky is falling. I think everything is going to be fine. Frankly, $20 should be 25 We've talked about that a few times on the show, but 20 is like Especially not enough. Is not quite enough, yeah. especially in California. Um, yeah. I do think they should use this as a recruiting tool to get people to move to California because of the the higher minimum wage. Uh, get people leaving Texas and Florida. So who's going to serve your your barbacoa bowl if they're all in California making more money? <laughs> I think that's interesting. Uh, this is being politicized big time. Uh, the New York Go Post, uh, right wing, yeah. uh, entertaining publication, nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, their headline was California fast food minimum wage law is already a disaster and New York wants some of it too. Uh, so this is going to be politicized, but there's no skies falling situation in California. No, no one, no one is going now. Will some people lose their job? Probably. I think, I think the best people will stay and maybe some of the worst will be let go. There'll be some people that, that are sacrificed for this prices. Don't blow up like i think people uh have been have been fearful of i do think it will increase or accelerate the investment in robots um i think that's inevitable no matter where we are people just hate mm. employing people no matter how much they're paying them uh the interesting thing will be in 10 years when we're hopefully not doing the show anymore but what do fast food places look like is it, is it like a really small group of professionals that make really good salaries and they're managing the robots and the customer service like Restaurants will probably look much different than they they do today, but um, whether we're doing the show to talk about it, I don't know. But this is a good thing, people. This is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, I'll be on the beach in Portugal where we don't have fast food, so I won't give a fuck no matter what. <laughs> Listening to Kibu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I do enjoy the occasional Burger King uh, when I'm in Europe, though, and Five oh, Guys. Yeah. All right, uh, let's take a quick break, and uh, we'll talk about Amazon and Apple to really close out the show with a bang. LinkUp is the leading provider of deep, accurate, and actionable labor market data. Unique in that we only get job listings from the one source of truth, the employer's website. By going to the source, we avoid all the duplicate and expired job listings that plague job boards and thereby other job data sets. Our data offers the clearest window to employers of all types and sizes throughout the world for an ever-growing number of use cases and applications. All right, Chad, Amazon is removing Just Walk Out technology from its Amazon Fresh stores and replacing them with smart carts that allow customers to skip the checkout line but see their spending in real time. 
The change comes after customer feedback and as part of a revamp of the grocery chain, Just Walk Out technology is will be available in Amazon Go stores and some smaller Amazon Fresh stores in the UK, as well as to third-party retailers. But by all accounts, this program is on the ropes. Chad, your thoughts on Amazon's latest move? Yeah, I think the the smart carts are incredibly smart. I just hope it's not like enemy of the state where they have, you know, uh, cameras all over the place watching. And and I mean, that's just that gets gets a little bit too dystopian for me. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, to be able to see innovation come to grocery shopping, uh, the only thing that we've seen in innovation for grocery shopping, I mean, obviously back the back office stuff and then also inventory, those types of things that that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the 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 self checkouts, which they're going to be scaling back on. Yep. So will this be the replacement for a self checkout possibly in the future? Uh, I don't know, but it'll be it'll be interesting to watch. That's for damn sure. Yeah, uh, clearly self-serve uh, is in flux. Yeah. The, the 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 panacea of like let people check themselves out, no cashiers, uh, or just walk out the door, is not really built for human beings. Uh, human beings are like <laughs> just stand and stand at, at your local self serve checkout uh, area when you have some spare time. People mm. are like they don't scan it right. Uh, they take it off the way thing and they got to start forever. over. Like it's yeah. six people checking out. There's one person that has to handle six people. Two yeah. of them don't know what the hell they're doing. Uh, the third is like needs, needs ver- age verification because they're buying alcohol. Like you end up being in this infinite loop of waiting yeah. for the person to check you out oh, yeah. and waiting for them. And then people like it's people just aren't meant for self-service and so you see you somebody dollar like store target oh, shit. walmart are like <laughs> we're phasing some of this out and i think yeah. i think this has been a, an experiment by amazon that probably hasn't gone the way that they hoped look amazon did a lot of crazy stuff when bezos was at the helm whether it was like uh whole foods mgm studios why i guess they're getting into media more the fire phone uh remember uh nobody bought uh, no. and they fortunately under, under Jassy, they focused on three things that are really successful for them. E-commerce, mm-hmm. AWS and advertising. People don't understand. Amazon is like the third largest am, uh, advertising platform Oh yeah, out there. Those are really good profitable businesses that aren't a pain in the ass. So like this whole whole foods checkout thing has got to be a pain in the ass that they don't want to deal with. But they have to because they spent how many billions on Whole Foods? So they have to think about this. I don't know if this will work. I'm not hopeful for humanity to get get a I'm going to take a cart (laughs) and it's going to it's going to track what I put in the cart. And then I can just walk out like when do I put my credit card. Like you've seen videos of the just walk out where people are like, what do I do? Like, just walk out. I think there was a there was a comedy about some black people. They were like, "Wait, no, no, no! I'm not just walking out. Where do I pay for this? No, <laughs> yeah, no you shit. No, right? I'm not falling for this. Historically, historically, <laughs> I'm not walking out with right. shit. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Where's the camera? Yeah, yeah I'm not getting punked yeah. here. So, this, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think I think I think Amazon up. needs to focus on what they do well. Uh, get rid of these hubris inducing uh, side projects and get back to basics. But uh, they're not the only big company having a little bit of uh, an image image problem or uh, mm. you know what the hell they're going to be when they grow up problem. Apple, the largest company on the planet, is exploring the development of a mobile robot that can follow users around their homes and a robotic smart display for homes. But it is still in the early stages and not yet committed to releasing these products. The company has been under pressure to find new sources of revenue and sees robotics as a potential opportunity to expand its presence in the home market. The focus on AI and machine learning is part of Apple's strategy for future growth, but the company has yet not committed to either project. Chad, are you ready for Apple robots following you around in your house? And more than that, are your dogs ready for a robot to follow you around in your house? Yeah, the the only thing I could think of is the Jetsons and Rosie 
mm-hmm. their their robot that followed them around. Uh, yeah. I thought that was really cool. Now I have my own place, my own dogs, and yeah, I don't need that. I've got robots that uh, you know vacuum my carpet and mm-hmm. can possibly mark you know mop my floor, but I don't need any of that other shit. I I'm. Sometimes I want to unplug my Google Home just mm-hmm. because the fucker listens to me all the time. So I, I think, yeah, this is this is literally a bridge too far for yep. me, at least. Uh, I just I'm just not sure how long it's going to take for society to start. Well, first and foremost, the the cost, right? So the cost uh, is going to be is going to be a factor. But will society be comfortable with mm-hmm. having something like that in the house? all the time i don't know i I just know that i won't can i have sex with the robot and does it look like uh jennifer aniston is the question i guess that i have for this thing obviously it's not Well, connect with your only fans page look part part of me feels bad for these big companies that have to make these huge swings uh they can't just dabble in stuff and apple yeah is post steve jobs Really, it's it's like AirPods and technically the watch that have been successful, mm-hmm. which are really extensions of the iPhone. Yeah. Um, so, look, they've they've dabbled in TVs. They were rumored to get into that. Uh, they were rumors cars. to have cars. Uh, yeah, Apple happening. Home was a thing. CarPlay should be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, they just can't get it right. And this nope. ain't it. Look, Vision, the Vision Pros dead on arrival uh yeah I, I haven't heard anything about them since they launched um frankly you know i wear glasses chad and my latest pair is the meta ray band um glasses which are great because you don't really know yeah. they're smart glasses i can i can listen to music or my or podcasts as my wife uh-huh. yells at me about how i didn't mow the yard right i'm just listening to that i can take pictures and video like that's the kind of thing Apple needs to develop. They need to buy uh-huh. Warby Parker or partner with Prada or Dolce Gabbana and, and create like smart glasses that are like that, that are cool. You don't really know they're there. These big swings are are messing, uh, messing them up. I guess as a final thought, maybe Amazon and Apple could partner and create a penis rocket that can follow me <laughs> around my house. That, my friends... <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a home run. And with that, we out. We out. Thank you for listening to what's it called? The podcast. The chat. The cheese. Brilliant. They talk about recruiting. They talk about technology. But most of all, they talk about nothing. Just a lot of shout-outs of people you don't even know, and yet you're listening. It's incredible. And not one word about cheese. Not one. Cheddar. Blue. Nacho. Pepper Jack. Swiss. So many cheeses, and not one word. So weird. Anywho, be sure to subscribe today on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. That way, you won't miss an episode. And while you're at it, visit www.chatcheese.com. Just don't expect to find any recipes for grilled cheese. It's so weird. We out!